finally, someone is trying something new in the gaming mouse space. This might be the most interested I've been in trying a new product in a long time. This is the Era One gaming mouse. It's not even a real product yet. It's just on Kickstarter, but the whole raison d'etre is just this simple innovation. Let's uh, take the sensor from down here and put it up here. Let's find out if that does anything. Full disclosure, this is a prototype. So we can't give full impressions on like the build quality and whatnot, but this is a near final shape. So this is gonna give us a good idea of what the final product would be. It's a 3D printed body, but it's not the worst 3D print I've ever felt. This unfortunately is a wired mouse, which is a bit of a bummer because I generally prefer wireless mice. But the benefit of that is that this is a very light mouse. This is a 60 gram mouse, which is lighter than a G Pro X Superlight, and even a little bit lighter than a Model D minus, which is my preferred wired mouse. The feeling in the hand is not bad. It's a little chonky in the sides. In the photos, it looked tiny, and I assumed from the weight it was one of those like claw only finger grips. It is a little bit short, but my palm rests fairly comfortably on this and then kind of claws naturally around the mouse. They say it's designed for both fingertip and claw, not like palming. Yeah, you'd have a bad time just like <laughs> going full palm, but it doesn't feel uncomfortable. It's not my preferred shape. I think I want a little bit more on the caboose. I mean, I'm all about that mouse base. No, no trouble. <laughs> this is close to the final shape, but they intend to raise the steepness of the fingertips and bring in the sides a bit. I think bringing the sides is really important. It feels pretty wide. I'm having a hard time getting my fourth and fifth finger and thumb to feel particularly comfortable. I find the mouse wheel is like a kind of a little far forward and clicking it. I would have a hard time clicking it without rolling it a little bit. The side buttons feel pretty good, although they are sort of indented into the side. As soon as you press them, they sort of disappear. I don't wanna go too hard into it. It's a prototype. It is what it is. I think they did make a really good choice using the Kale 8.0 switches. They're rated for 80 million clicks. I know a lot of people put those in as aftermarket switches in their mice because they prefer that feeling. It also is nice to know that it'd be really easy to switch out for your preferred switch. It's got PTFE feet for smooth gliding. Well, they definitely feel a little bit thin. I'm used to them having a little bit of roundness. It's not bad. Prototype, you know, yeah, prototype. As this is a prototype, we're gonna focus on the main innovation of this mouse, which is moving the sensor up all the way to the top. Intuitively, that makes a lot of sense. You think about how you hold a mouse. If you have the sensor down here, moving the same amount, it's moving less distance and you have less precision than if it's at the front. Like with your hand, all of a sudden, you're moving the sensor a lot on those micro adjustments. All of a sudden, you have all this extra range of motion. You could see how moving it up would give you a lot more control. I'm really excited to plug this in and see. My fear is by design, all of a sudden the weight's gonna creep forward. I like pretty balanced mice, you know, front and back weight. I know on a wireless mouse, you can move the battery back, you know, counteract, and you can still have PCB and stuff further back. But on a wired mouse, I'm a little bit worried that it's just always gonna feel a little front heavy and which would take away from the mobility and then reduce the advantage you gain from moving the sensor up. Anyway, but we'll get to that. You know, we'll get to that when we get to it. I'm worried that it might be one of those products that if you used it for a week or a month, it would start to click and you just get a little more precision. But as someone who has my settings pretty dialed in, we'll see how much this throws it off. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug it in, use the settings that I'm used to, see how that feels, and then maybe just tweak them a little bit, maybe decrease the sensitivity as I'm gonna be moving a little bit wilder. The whole principle, according to these Kickstarter pages, that it's, it's fits law, uh, which is like, if you move stuff further away from the point of motion, it moves, but there's like lots of numbers and lots of crazy shit and who knows. Uh. I feel ready to plug this in, see how it feels, talk about the sensor. But first, let's talk about our sponsor, Ugreen. Ugreen's new Nexode Mini 45 watt charger packs a punch with a small footprint of 2.62 cubic inches. It's a hard sentence to say. Rocking dual USB Type-C ports, Ugreen's charger can charge two devices at high speed simultaneously, supporting a maximum charging power of 45 watts. Coming in sleek black finish, you'll pack power in style. Learn more at the link in the description below. Let's speak about the cable a little bit. The cable is feels really good. It's a paracord surrounding this exterior. It's got that loose feel so it doesn't drag as much. This is like my ideal type of cable for this thing. You can tell this mouse was designed by someone who thinks about what a mouse should be. It's just, wired mice are such a bummer. Unless you are set up for it and have a bungee, 
you're always gonna just like, gonna be trying to do a flick or something and it's just gonna drag. This is as good of an implementation as you can do. And as it is one person making this, I totally understand. But uh, I'm crying a little bit on the inside. I forgot to mention that there's a DPI switch. They say that this mouse goes between 400 and 3200, which is kind of the sweet spot, I think, for what most people are actually using. I generally go 800 unless I'm playing an old game. It's using a PMW 3360, which is a sensor in a ton of mice, including Zowie's and Glorious. It's considered a flawless sensor. I think it's a good choice for this mouse keeping the costs down, but not compromising on quality. Even though it says that it goes between 400 and 32, the DPI switch on the bottom does not seem to be going down to 400. It feels like, holy smokes, that's crazy. Ah! Okay, maybe there's more settings. Okay, that feels like 800. I'm not gonna worry too much about sensitivity. It might throw off a little bit of how it feels. We've moved to this setup. It's gonna give me a better approximation of what I'm doing at home. I have my settings semi-dialed in. First impressions, it's a mouse. I don't like the grip that I'm having on this shell. There's like a difference between the bottom part and the top part. So it just feels a little bit off. Again, it's prototype. It's a little too hard. I like a little bit of squeeze, although maybe it'll prevent me from breaking mice out of rage. In terms of tracking, I don't immediately feel a difference. I think that with a bit more use and being able to dial in settings exactly in the mouse, I might feel it a little bit more. In a bit, we'll compare it to some more traditional mice uh, that I have a bit more experience with and see how it feels. Gotta show off that uh, my one heirloom. I think I have two actually, but. There's movements that I have that feel like they're spot on. But then sometimes I'm moving and I'm getting a little less motion than I would expect. I don't know if it's my brain that is freaking out because it's like, hey, this is a different kind of mouse, bro. I think that's just something you'd have to get used to, but uh, that is outside the scope of this video, you know? Overall, this is feeling pretty good. Why don't we plug in a mouse that I know a little bit more and see how the comparison feels. First off, let's try the Model D minus. This is my preferred Gloria shape. It's also a wired mouse. It doesn't have the solid shell, but I think the construction quality is slightly better. Prototype, you know, prototype. I love this shape. I wish they made a wireless variant of this. They make a, a wireless Model D, but not a Model D minus. It's interesting. This feels more sensitive. Maybe let's, this feels slightly less sensitive. I think having the sensor a little bit higher is making that 800 is feeling a little bit less responsive, not less responsive, but it's moving a little bit less by my actions. This is what I'm used to. Although I did, my brain was starting to adjust pretty quick to the other one. This one's feeling a little bit slow. I don't think it's gonna make as much of a difference as the claims are. I think intuitively it would make a little bit of a difference, but like most gaming peripherals, it's just what you're used to. If you're used to the way that it's faster sometimes and slower from the top, then I think that's better. But if you're used to the more uniform motion or the more traditional, acceleration from having the sensor right under the center point. I think that'll be better. Let's try a G Pro X. No, I don't even need to. Now nah, I wanna plug it in one more time. <laughs> Please, Glorious, make a Model D minus. And I mean, get subscribed so you can not miss that content as it drops, but damn, man. Get out of here, cable. What? D minus, why does it really exist? Okay, I'm gonna get that mouse. I seem to be doing a little bit better with this mouse which is interesting. I wouldn't expect that. I did dial in my settings first on this, and I don't feel like I can make a definitive statement if putting the sensor at the top is an overall better thing. What I can say is that I'm having a really positive experience today. I think that this is a fantastic idea, and it actually is uh, feeling pretty tight. There is an adjustment because some movements, you're getting way more action, and some movements are getting way less, but that's just, like I said, getting used to it. You can color me intrigued. If you are also intrigued, the Kickstarter's still up. They are looking for some funding, you know, making a full deal mouse. I think this is worth backing. It's not a mouse that's ready for production. It's 3D printed, it doesn't have the best build quality, but it's an idea worth supporting. If you have the money and you're excited about something new in the gaming mouse space, I like this thing. This is, uh, this is pretty cool, and I hope that they can take it all the way. Thank you so much for watching this short circuit. If you wanna watch other mouse content, go watch my Model D minus video. I like that mouse. It's just comfortable.